Risa Floor utilizes intuitive floor-by-floor -floor model input to design and optimize building systems constructed of composite and non-composite steel, concrete, masonry, wood, and cold form steel. In this video, we will look at ways to quickly and easily modify your existing Risa Floor model, both graphically and from within spreadsheets. To start, I have a model here in progress that I've drawn using the project grid lines. Now the project grid lines are useful not only for drawing in new elements, so for example if I want to draw in some concrete columns I can do so by clicking at the individual grid lines or by highlighting over multiple and creating several all at once that way. Also note that the label for the column automatically corresponds to the grid lines where it was drawn. But I can also use this to my advantage to do some modifications. If I go into the project grid spreadsheet we see the start and end coordinates of all of the project grid lines. And let's say that the architect is asking you to move project grid line D five feet to the left. I can do so by highlighting the start and end Z coordinates, right clicking and choosing fill block or control F. And this allows me to fill in both values at once. Value of 65 moves everything over to the right five feet. Notice that all of the walls along the grid line, as well as the start and end points of the beams, moved over with it, as well as the diaphragm edge was automatically adjusted. And I had some area loads that I applied to that center region. Those came over as well. We can do even more mass changes with a different command in the same spreadsheet called math on block. So for example, if I wanted to move two grid lines at once, D and E, and I want to move them both over five feet, I can highlight all four cells, right click again, choose math on block or control M. And this allows me to add, subtract, multiply, or divide all of those highlighted cells by a number of my choosing. So for example, I can subtract five feet from all of those coordinates, and it's going to move all of those elements correspondingly. Now we can see the plan horizontal beams shifted nicely, but I do have a spacing issue left over with my plan vertical beams. Not a big issue. I can deselect the whole model, select only the beams in question, use the delete command to delete all selected beams, and then go to my generate infill beams tool and I had these at an equal spacing, not to exceed five feet in the plan vertical direction. And when I hit apply, I can click once, twice within those bays to redraw those beams quickly and easily. Okay, let's move to a more complicated model in progress and talk about some graphical editing tools. So I have here a slightly more complicated model, a podium structure that I was working on. Bring up my graphical editing toolbar. Notice that in all of my drawing icons here, I also have a second tab for modifying the properties of that particular element. So for example, I can modify columns, I can modify wall panels, I can even modify my diaphragm that's existing right now. So for example, without needing to redraw the entire diaphragm, I could modify the overhang distance from 12 inches to four inches, apply to all selected, and we see that that diaphragm A and edge overhang shrank from 12 inches to four. In the element modify tabs, you notice that I have these use checkboxes. These allow me to modify only one or two properties of this particular element without changing everything else about it. I can apply those modifications to individual elements by clicking them, or I can apply them to all that I have selected in the current view. This can be used in conjunction with the Select by Criteria tool to great effect. So for example, if I unselect my model, open up that Select by Criteria tool, we see that I have the option to select points, columns, beams, walls, and slabs using a large set of criteria. So for example, if I go to my walls, 
I can select only lateral walls, only my shear walls, and I can even do just the perimeter walls. When I hit apply, I get just that, the perimeter shear walls around the entirety of my model. Now I can go back into that modify tab and I can do something like change their design rule to this exterior shear wall design rule that I have set up. Hit apply to all selected and the change is made. I can do the same thing for my interior shear walls using a tricky combination of selection tools. Hit this button here on the left hand side, it inverts the selected state of the model. So now I have everything except my exterior shear wall selected. Go back to my criteria selection tool and now I can choose gravity and unselect all of the gravity walls. So now I have only interior shear walls selected and I can make a similar modification to their design rule. It's okay that I have all of these beam elements selected here as well. This is only going to modify the wall panels in the selected view. Now if I suspect that this is going to be a useful selection state to me down the line, I can also save it and bring it up later. So I can save this as interior walls, hit OK, go about my modeling, do some other things, and if I need to come back to it, the same tool retrieves the selection state, interior walls. Finally, let's talk about some spreadsheet modifications that we can do with this, this model. If I open up my beams spreadsheet, I can use that same command that I used before, control F or fill block, to modify something like the material type of all of these beams that I have highlighted. So I can fill in a value that correspond that is valid from the list here in this drop-down list. It doesn't have to just be a number. I can enter in a value, say, of SP, which corresponds to a southern pine material type and the change is made to all of those beams. Another great application of the math on block command comes with loading. So for example, if I wanted to increase the area load of everything in my model by 10%, go in here to my area load definition spreadsheet, right click math on block or control M, and I can multiply all of these dead load values by 1.1, which will increase them all by a factor of 10%. The fill block and math on block commands have a wide array of applications within spreadsheets. That concludes this video on model modifications. For more information about RISA floor, please visit risa.com.